Hello YouTubers, welcome to Johnny's Nasdaq YouTube channel. In my previous video, download and deploy FortiGate Firewall into VMware Workstation Lab, you already see how we can easily get a 40 gate VM into your lab environment. To make things even simpler, Fortinet has worked with Microsoft, created a test drive VM for you to play with it. If you using 40 gate search in the marketplace, you should be able to find out 40 NAT 40 gate next generation firewall and here's a test drive. You also can easily go to 40 gate-azure.com start your free 30 days trial to start getting the same web page for a test drive. Using this test drive, you don't have to download in the sources and you can just click the test drive button and you can get a working 40 gate firewall with a manual guide you to finish the lab step by step. In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you the whole lab process and you can easily follow them to finish your this test drive and understanding better how 40 gate firewall working in the Azure environment. Let's start it. Click test drive button. It's going to launch a page to fill in all information. And continue. So it's setting up the test drive. Basically, this test drive going to create in a virtual environment for this lab. You even don't need a subscription. You can experience this product for the gate next generation firewall. The test drive will have three hours for you to play. The only thing you can access is the FortiGate firewall. So FortiGate firewall, you also can SSH to the server, which is gonna use to do testing. You won't be able to see the Azure environment configuration. So right now, the test drive environment has been provisioned. We have three hours to play with it. We got the HTTPS with public IP on port 8443. And there's a user menu. We can take a look. Here we will get the username, password, diagrams. That's our web diagram. And here is the username. To make this diagram more detailed, I drew another diagram. Um, let me explain a little bit. So that's the 40 gate VM. So we can access it using that URL in the web page. So we will get a private certification error here. Um, that's okay because we are using self-signed certificates on HTTPS service. You can get the username password from this user menu. So you're gonna be able to log in. For the 40 gig setup, there's a dashboard setup. You can start begin the setup. You can choose optimal for your dashboard or comprehensive. I will just choose comprehensive. It will also show you 40 OS 7.0 new features. It's a short video. Um, we can skip it. So that's the dashboard. We have our WAN IP, we have serial number, firmware version. We are using 
FGT ADR license, one CPU, two gig of RAM. You also can see CPU memory and the sessions information here. For the diagram, um, I would like to explain a little bit more. So we have 40 gate VM. On the 40 gate VM, there's two interface. Port one, I would say it's a WAN interface, 10.0.1.4. Port two is 10.0.2.4. Actually, for the internal network segment, there are two segments. 10.0.2.0 slash 24 is for the internal, but there's no server, no machines in that network. We do have one server, Ubuntu Apache server, 10.0.3.4 which we are going to use it for the testing in this lab. There's some other customized routing table configured in the Azure environment, which we won't be able to see, but actually there's uh, some settings to route all traffic from 10.0.2.0.0 24 and 10.0.3.0 go through port 2 not using the default Azure Gateway 10.0.2.1 or 10.0.3.1 to go to internet. So there's a customized routing table to route the traffic to use a FortiGate to go to the internet. So we can follow this guide to finish this lab. So one thing I want to change before we continue the lab is the system settings. You might want to change the idle time from 5 minutes to 50 minutes, just in case you need a longer time to process the command. And the system going to time out, then you have to re-enter username password again. Also, for a login purpose, you also may want to change the time zone. So once we enable login, you can actually see the traffic what time the traffic was happening. We can take a look at the interface. As, you, as we said, mentioned before, there are two interfaces. Port 1, it's already been configured 10.0.1.4. Port 2, 10.0.2.4. Port 2, 10 .0 .2 .4. There are static routes configured already for any destination 10.0.0. .0 .0 dot zero slash sixteen this traffic they were using ten dot zero dot two dot one ten dot zero dot two dot one is a dual gateway which can make the traffic make the traffic talking to each other ten dot zero dot two dot zero and talking to ten dot zero dot three dot zero so all the traffic if they need to go and that's the important for this lab it by default is already being enabled. Now we can follow this guide to finish the two tasks. There are two tasks in this lab. There are two tasks we need to complete. The first task is make sure when the server can reach out to the internet. Right now, because we don't have policy, the traffic won't be able to reach out to the internet. Second task, make sure we can uh, access Ubuntu Service HTTP page from internet. So let's uh, log into our Ubuntu server through command line. So there's a console icon on the top right. Click on it. You should be able to get this terminal console. You can paste the command. Type in the password. Now we are on our uh, Ubuntu server. You can go into root mode using the sudo dash i command. Based on lab, it will asking us to do some update because there's a no rule to allow this traffic go to internet. It will be failed. So we cannot try that. So it's trying to connecting. 
So one thing I want to point out, which is not in the user menu, we are gonna enable login. Right now, if you go to the log forward traffic, you won't be able to see anything because we didn't enable log login here. So if you go to firewall policy, there's an implicit deny for all or but that log is disabled. Let's try to enable it. And then we can uh, try to do sudo apt dash get update. Um, the traffic will be, was been denied by firewall policy, which is implicit deny rule. As you can see from 10.0.3.4, the policy violation has been denied. So what we're going to do, we're going to add outbound connectivity policy. Create a new rule. So one thing we want to, to enable is log allowed traffic all sessions. So all sessions we allowed. So if we only log in security events by default, then we won't be able to see those normal traffic. Here, I also would like to put the ICMP traffic in. So Let's try it. So now, now we can pin before we won't be able to pin. And also we can do APT update now. So since it's going to internet right now, we can check the traffic again. You can see the traffic has been allowed. So there's a form Mac bytes from this IP has been downloaded. Another 20 megabytes data has been allowed to access. So that's our step one, a lure. We completed one lure to make sure open the server can reach out to internet. Well, next step is we're gonna install Apache server. So let me make sure this server which can be reached out from the internet. You can minimize it and take a look at traffic again. So there's more traffic. So we see the pin here as well. So we did one pin to 8.8.8. .8 now it's showing here. Uh, and then we are installing Apache service. So it's downloading and uh, and installing right now. Okay, it's completed. After that, we can minimize it again. We're gonna create the VIP for the traffic since we need to net our internal DMZ Ubuntu server to internet. So we're gonna creating our VIP virtual IP, virtual IPs. We're gonna create a new virtual IP name port one static NAT external IP ten dot zero dot one dot four going to map into dot three dot four. And also we're going to enable port forwarding 80, 80 only. So we create a VIP. After that, we need to create a firewall rule to allow that. 
incoming interface will be port one, then it will go to port two. Source will be from everywhere on the internet. Destination will be our VIP. Service will be HTTP only. One thing I would like to change is the login. Not only UTM traffic, I will log in all traffic. So when there's a traffic hit this server, then we will have log for that. All changes has been done. We're gonna try to access to it. We're gonna use an HTTP to access to it because we only allow port 80. So the Apache 2 Ubuntu default page, this page has been allowed. So based on our diagram here, we can see we have public IP 13.86.224.213. So this public IP all been netted to 10.0.1.4. This part has been taken by Azure Environment Configuration. Our firewall did the N1 to one NAT forwarding from 10.0.1.4 to 10.0.3.4 on port 80. That's our VIP configuration. So when the traffic hit the 13.86.224.213, actually you were sent to 10.0.1.4 first, and from 10.0.1.4, they will automatically map into 10.0.3.4 on port 80. That's how this happened. So that's pretty much everything in this user manual. So this is just a very simple use case as Liz mentioned here. We only have two interface, so one for WAN, one for LAN. In a LAN, we have two zones, one internal zone and then another one we call it DMZ zone. So we learned how to configure firewall rule to allow our internal network to go to internet. Also, we learned how to create VIP, virtual IP to do one to one NAT port forwarding. That is all for this video. If you think this video is having some useful information, please give me a sum up. Also, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in my next episode.